Hello, everyone. It's uh, Friday, October the 28th. I'm sorry we're getting started late here and everything. There's been lots and lots of things come up this morning and everything, but uh, uh, more than anything, I ask for your prayers. We've lost an additional 21 people in West Virginia. Uh, the 7,494th death is a 36-year-old female from Berkeley County. 36 years old. Mm-mm-mm. 7,495th death, an 81-year-old female from Morgan County. 7,496th death, an 85-year-old male from Fayette County. 7,497th death, an 84-year-old male from Jefferson County. 7,498th death, a 77-year-old male from Kanawha County. The 7,499th death, a 79-year-old male from Raleigh County. The 7,500th 75, 75th death in West Virginia is a 73-year-old male from Fayette County. The 7,501st death is an 89-year-old male from Raleigh County. The 7,502nd death is a 79-year-old female from Wetzel County. The 7,503rd death a 52-year-old male from Kanawha County. The 7,504th death a 90-year-old female from Putnam County. The 7,505th death, a 45-year-old male from Wyoming County. The 7,506th death, a 91-year-old male from Morgan County. The 7,507th death, an 89-year-old female from Kanawha County. The 7,508th death, a 74-year-old female from Raleigh County. The 7,509th death, a 66-year-old female from Berkeley County. The 7,510th death, an 83-year-old female from Mercer County. The 7,511th death, an 89-year-old female from Marion County. The 7,512th death, a 68-year-old female from Harrison County. The 7,513th death, an 89-year-old male from Harrison County. The 7,514th death in West Virginia is a 92-year-old male from Jefferson County. 7,514 folks we've lost. My gosh, it's terrible. Active cases, 817. New positive cases, 279. Positivity, da daily positivity rate, 5.62. Cumulative rate is at 8.55. Recovered cases now in West Virginia, 607,366. We have 146 patients hospitalized, 23 in the ICU units, and 10 on ventilators. And most of our counties are green and yellow. We don't have any, any gold counties right now. Um, I remind you about your Omicron booster shot. It's available 12 and older. Absolutely, folks, we should absolutely be getting that booster shot, especially if you're 50 and older. Please, please, please get that booster shot. The numbers still are getting a little teeny bit better, slow but sure. The vaccine calculator is up there for you. If you'll go on our website and everything, it'll help you be able to know when you, when you, to get your booster shots. Any vaccine, uh, COVID vaccine information is up on our website. 37 outbreaks in our long-term care facilities, none in our church communities, 35 inmates and 12 staff cases. Homeowner assistance program is up there. If you will call us, we'll try to get you qualified. If we can, it could be some significant dollars to you. And, uh, and not only that, the multiplier effect, as I've said so many times, to all of our communities and everything, it can help there too. From the standpoint of giving blood, check with your physicians and everything, and absolutely uh, please consider. Uh, you know, in, in regard to uh, you know, our community conversations about Amendment 2. You know, yesterday I was invited to the Kanawha County Commission to speak on Amendment 2. I was, when I was there, they announced that several organizations have come out against Amendment 2. Now think about this. These organizations have come out and many of the letters said unanimously, unanimously, but the West Virginia Sheriff's Association the West Virginia Fraternal Order of Police, the West Virginia Chiefs of Police Association, Kanawha Deputies Sheriff's Association, and the St. Albans Fraternal Order of Police. 
And this was at the Kanawha County Commission. Now just think about it. At the end of the day, and I've said it so many times, you know, if we never ever in our history have a bump in the road, you know, and we produce surplus after surplus after surplus, there'll be so much goodness happening in West Virginia that it'll be easy. But really and truly, that won't happen. We'll have times, I may be long gone, but we'll have times when things get really tough. And when they do, if we change our constitution, which we don't have to do, we do not have to do that. This thing's been couched, do this and get rid of your car tax. Well, I have a mechanism right now in place, a bill written, it's ready to go. that will absolutely rebate you back dollar for dollar, cent for cent on every single dime of your car tax. The car tax issue is gone now. Now the people on the other side of the fence are still trying to, to get, dangle that in front of you to buy your vote. You know, it was the wrong thing to do, in my opinion, in the first place. You were hoodwinked. You, were, you, you, were, you thought Amendment 2 only was really primarily about your car tax. And lo and behold, it's not about car tax at all. It's about changing the Constitution of West Virginia, cutting off the income stream to our counties, putting Charleston in control of everything, turning our back on Toby and Edith that are out there. Toby and Edith, the ones, the folks that really need our help, they're the ones that are dealing with inflation every day. They're the ones that are getting just eat up with gas prices and the prices of groceries. We need to help them first and foremost. You know, literally Amendment 2 and a change of the Constitution will drive a stake in the heart of getting rid of your personal income tax forever and ever and ever. And there's even more. There's even more about it that you should know. At the end of the day, when the counties become upside down and Charleston doesn't have the money to fund them, what will be the only recourse of the counties? At that point in time, the only recourse will be today your property values are being assessed at a 60% level. You know, if this thing passes and we change the Constitution and we absolutely layer in a base build on our government that is so substantial that we have a bump in the road and we can't get away from, what's going to happen to you then? Here's what will have to happen. Instead of the counties assessing your property at 60% of their assessed value, they'll have to raise that assessment. You know, if they raise the amount of the assessment from a percentage basis from 60 to 80 or 80 to 90 or 90 to 100% of the assessed value, your taxes are going to go up and go up in a big, big, big way. The car tax is not an issue. The car tax is completely off the table. You're absolutely going to get rebated back for your car tax, and it is totally off the table. Your question is really simple. What in the world are we doing trying to change the Constitution that's been in place in, the, in regard to this issue for 90 years? 90 years it's been in place, and it's worked for the counties. That's why the West Virginia Sheriff's Association the West Virginia Fraternal Order of Police, the West Virginia Chiefs of Police Association, the Kanawha Deputy Sheriff's Association, the St. Albans Fraternal Order of Police, 53 counties, all kinds of school boards. Everybody in the world is jumping on and saying, we can't possibly have this. We didn't know this. We thought this was just about a car tax. For crying out loud, we didn't know all the things that are to come. Think about this just for a second. You see this right here? This was given to me. Now, these are just my notes that you're seeing right here. But, but this was given to me this morning. This publication is put out by the Tax Foundation. This is the roadmap that is used by the Senate, the House, our office, all over the place. Basically, what it is saying in 2023, the State Business Tax Climate Index. This is the publication by the Tax Foundation 
that's saying, what states are the best states to do business in? West Virginia ranks 20th in the nation, 20th in the nation as the best business climate state in the nation. Now look, say what you want, but President Blair and Chairman Tarr have said repeatedly over and over and over to us that we need to try to be like Ohio and Pennsylvania. Look at them. Look at them. Ohio's ranked 37th as the best in the nation, and Pennsylvania's ranked 33rd. I don't want to be Ohio and Pennsylvania. You know where I want you to be? I want you to be Florida, Tennessee, Wyoming, Alaska, Texas. That's where I want us to be. And at the end of the day, those states are really growing. Every last one of those states does not have a personal income tax. I can tell you over and over and over, and I've said it a thousand times, business after business after business is coming to West Virginia today. Berkshire Hathaway, Nucor, Green Power, Pure Watercraft, on and on and on and on. None of them. None of them have ever asked me in any way. No business has ever called me and said, you know, I'd come to West Virginia if you got rid of that machinery and inventory tax. So if they've never called me, and to God above, I am telling you the gospel fact. You know, if they've never mentioned it to their governor that's been here for six years, why in the world, why on earth are we so wedded to do such a thing as that? That could basically take all of our county control away, absolutely just turn our back on our folks that are really hurting with inflation. How could we take, how could we jeopardize the police or the firemen or the schools? How could we do such a thing? One word, swamp. One word. Lobbyists promises of the next elected office, whatever it may be. It's not good. It's just not good. First Responders Day. I just signed a proclamation declaring today as First Responders Day in West Virginia. I hope to goodness that you'll join me in celebration of this day. You know, when it really boils right down to it, from the 911 dispatchers, the firefighters, police officers, emergency medical service members, on and on and on, the search and rescue teams, and all the other organizations that were associated to our first responders in any way, be real just for one minute. Be honest. These people ran to the fire every day in this terrible pandemic. They're the first ones we always call when we got a problem. You know, we need to support them with all of our heart everywhere we turn. In this nation, maybe not so bad in West Virginia, but in this nation today, crime is absolutely just running rampant. Without any doubt, every, almost every day, you hear of another tragedy somewhere where a police officer is shot, or a police officer has been killed, Absolutely over and over and over, you hear of unbelievable bravery, unbelievable of hero acts and everything that, that all of our first responders have done, you know, uh, all over the place. You see a burning car and literally you see our first responders or someone running to that car to save the people that are in the car. You see floods and people just where, where the flood waters have just absolutely just destroyed everything somebody has. And now they're clinging to a tree or whatever it may be. And here our first responders are again, over and over and over. We could never be more blessed. Today's our day. Please take time, you know, to call or recognize or see or pat on the back these great people that have done so much for all of us. God bless each and every one of them. Um, we have a vet discount program. And, uh, you know, to show our appreciation to our vets and active duty military personnel, we are offering 
several discounts for all the U.S. veterans at our state parks. We've done this in the past and everything, but veterans who stay at the West Virginia State Park Lodge throughout the month of November are eligible for a 50% discount on the lodge room rates and everything. It's all just absolutely good stuff. At the end of the day, when we step back and think, I've said it and I'll say it to my grave without any question and everything, we owe every single thing we have in this life to all those that serve in our military. Whether they be vets or whether they be active military in every way, we owe everything we have to these folks. The least we could do is help out just a little teeny bit. We got a big, big, big time announcement, you know, that's going on, you know, in the Roads to Prosperity program and everything. And that is today at 2.30, we will officially, and I can't believe this, this is really wonderful stuff because God knows, you know, the congestion and everything that we've all had to deal with forever. But today at 2.30, we will officially open the new Nitro St. Albans Bridge on I-64 over the Canal River. The bridge is part of a $224 million widening project from Nitro to US 30 to the US 35 interchange and it's paid for through the Roads to Prosperity program. The whole project wouldn't have been possible without the Roads to Prosperity program and I encourage you to tune in and everything into the ceremony or come out and see it for yourself. It'll be a big, big, big day. And uh, I think, I think, let, let me go back to this just one second. This, you know, where, where we showed, we showed you just a second ago, you know, the states that surround us and everything. All the states around us are really not as, not as friendly to business as far as the business climate, except the state of Kentucky. And they're number 18, we're number 20. For all practical purposes, we're real close to the same. You know, like I said, Pennsylvania and Ohio, nobody wants to go there that's in their right mind, and I'm not giving them a hard time, but nevertheless. But now just think about this. Think about these states. Wyoming, number one. South Dakota, number two. Alaska, number three. Florida, number four. Now just think about it. Nevada, number seven. And I'm going to miss some. I'm, I'm you know, I'm just you know, bouncing around. Texas, number 13. All those states, no personal income tax. Literally. If you want something to turn the dial and drive real growth to West Virginia, I know exactly what it ought to be. But irregardless of that in any way, why on earth would you blow your legs off and absolutely try to change the, or change the Constitution why would you risk your counties and move local control to Charleston? Why would you do such a thing and risk what our police, and our firemen, our schools, what would you risk? Why would you risk that? You know, why would you put your community at risk and you're doing that? You got to really, really be careful. You need to vote no and you need to vote no in a gigantic way in regard to Amendment 2. The last thing I'd tell you is just this. I, you know, nobody, nobody that you probably know will benefit more from Amendment 2 passing than me. And I'm telling you, don't do it. My companies, it would mean millions of dollars to my family's companies. I'm telling you, don't do it because it isn't the right thing for all of us. And we need the right thing for all West Virginians. That's all I've got. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Governor. We'll now go to members of the media for questions. We'll start with Mark Curtis from Next Star Media. Mark, I think you're still muted. Mark will come back. Let's now go to John Shaver from WV News. Good morning, Governor and everyone else. Uh, Governor, earlier you mentioned um, you're happy with the, the, the vaccine intake rate, although it's, it's slowly going up. 
Um, do we have any numbers on that? And, and, and what are your thoughts fully on the, the bivalent intake? Look, I, I'm really, really having a difficult time, you know, hearing, you know, from the standpoint. But, uh, but if I, if I, if you know, if I heard enough, this was a question about the, the vaccine and the vaccine numbers. And uh, Dr. Marsh and Dr. Anjad are not able to be with us today. And 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 General Hoyer and and all I can all I can tell you in regard to that is. You know, they're so much better qualified to give you the more accurate numbers in regard to that and everything. And I can get back to you, but but if part of your question was, uh, you know, my opinion, you know, on on making it mandatory or not mandatory, you know, as far as as our children being vaccinated, well, I've I've already gone through all that, and and I and I stand wholeheartedly with that's a parent's decision. But I but I may have just misheard the question. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you, Governor, and thank you, John. Mark, you with us now? Sorry, I'm all thumbs today. Uh, Governor, first of all, I'd like to, a two-part question here. I'd like to get your reaction to the state's takeover of the Lincoln County, I'm sorry, Logan County school system, and what do you think needs to be done to right the ship there, especially given the recent low test scores statewide? Um, and the second part of the question is Amendment 4. Because in essence, if Amendment 4 passes, the legislature could undo what the Board of Education did yesterday and put everything back in the place the way it was in Logan County, uh, in theory. Uh, do, you, do you have concerns about that? Well, Mark, l let me just say this. You know, you know me. I'm going to try to give you the uh, straight, skinny, as best I could possibly you know, tell you that. But, uh, but uh, you know... I think the team found 46 points of non-compliance there. And, and to say that I'm, I'm not concerned would not be the truth at all. Uh, there are lots of concerns. And, uh, and, and you know, and, and as it goes on, they'll be, uh, they'll be more and more brought out about it and everything. But I, I would add, I would add just this, you know, from the standpoint of your question, you know, if, uh, you know, if Amendment 4 passes and everything, the, uh, the legislature is going to have oversight, maybe could, could prevent this from happening or overturn, whatever it may be. You know, that's, that's surely a concern also. I mean, when it really boils right down to it, you know, Mark, uh, we do have very qualified people in the State Board of Ed, and we should absolutely you know, support and respect the years of experience that they've put into this. At the end of the day, we don't want any of our kids to suffer, and we want our test scores to be a lot better and, and, and all that. But I would say this, too. If you, don't, if you think that there's not goodness going on in our schools, you're not thinking right. Because absolutely, and I challenge people to just do one thing. You know, go to fourth grade, ask the kids there, you know, what do you think about your teacher? Well, I'll promise you what they're going to say is, and let's use Miss Allen. You know, they'll say, oh, we love Miss Allen. And ask the parents, what do you think about your, the, uh, your kid's teacher? Oh, we think Miss Allen is a princess. You know, then, then go to the community and say, what do you think about your school? And I'll promise you overwhelmingly, our communities are proud of their schools. Now, if the kids love the teachers and the parents love the teachers and all of us are really proud of our community schools, there has got to be some real goodness going on in the schools. Now, does that mean that we can't get better? Of course not. We need to absolutely do more and more and more to make sure that our test scores are higher and strive to get better in every way. Remember, I'm the guy right off the get-go that said, make education our centerpiece. Make education our centerpiece. Now, we have, we've surely got to place a level of trust, you know, in our educators, in our board of education, our state board of education. 
you know, without any question was all in me, we want to continue to strive to do better. And, you know, and in this situation in Logan County, I'm sure there's real life concerns and everything that are going on. And, uh, and, and, and we've got good people that'll dig and, and, and dig till we get to the bottom of it. And, uh, and I hope and pray we're going to end up doing the, the, the very best thing overwhelmingly for our kids. Thank you, Mark. Governor, back to you. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'll just, I'll just, you know, sum it up real quickly. We've, we lost an additional 21 people and, uh, please keep them in your prayers. And, and without any question today, we passed 7,500 people in West Virginia. And, uh, and that's really sad, really, really sad. We got a lot, a lot, a lot to be really thankful for in West Virginia and be really thankful for all, in all of our lives, you know, but with all that in me, I, I urge you all to still stay on guard and think really, really, really hard about just the simple fact that we want to keep this rocket ship ride going. We don't want to blow our legs off. I mean, really and truly, I see no reason on the planet for us to embark on, on, on things like, you know, changing our, our constitution, changing the way the way that we're living our lives and everything. We want to make things better. We're doing that. For crying out loud, we're doing that and it's working. All I can say is what my dad said over and over. Son, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We need to absolutely remember that. Thank you so much. That's all I've got.